So, doing YouTube is a constant quest for content. You're always looking for new and interesting things to cover, right? Uh, some of it's like really good technical information and, and how to's and, and some of it's just like you can't believe what goes on, right? The, the rip-offs, the, the, the insanity, the incompetency. Kiwi, you're yes. a magnet for this stuff. Okay. That's a sad story, but yeah, it do seem to me. I, I feel like I get more than my fair share of cock-ups that come through the door. Well, he calls me this morning and he's like, man, I got a couple for you to, to, uh, to check out. So, naturally, I run right over here, I grab the camera, and it's like, so, so, okay, first, before we do that, before we do that, let's get a quick update on this Mustang that you were working on, the last one that we featured. Oh. It had no floors or... Yeah, it's coming along pretty well. We've got basically all the rust work's done. It's got all new, it's got all new torque boxes, inner rockers, floor pans. Basically the bottom six inches of the car is new. Right. Um, and then we're just putting the interior back in it now. We'll get the front fenders back on. And, uh, oh, yeah. oh, it's yeah. the car again. Yeah, it looked, I mean, it looked great before we put the carpet and all the nice new metal and it's kind of almost a shame to cover it up with the with the interior but you know uh, that's that's how it goes before the carpet was you know the floor was all spongy right. <laughs> now yeah, it's actually solid so and you can jack it up without the door gap like it just the door shut nice again so we have a red first generation mustang rag top with a white top that's that's all that was all jacked up and now it's it's getting better oh look the light is terrible i need kathy for this she's gonna yell at me so it appears to me kiwi that you're cloning these things because in the very next bay you've got a red first generation mustang with a white top you know let's step back here and get look at this yep. this is incredible it's, uh, it's the same but not we actually did a quick video the other day. We had three of them in here, so we actually compared the three of them. We had three red convertible Mustangs. <laughs> what was it called? The same of the video? Uh, tri topless triplets. Topless triplets. I uh, Kathy will throw a link to that one. <laughs> yeah. Now, now this is a special car. All right. Um, <laughs> this is a special car. It uh, it looks really nice. It's beautiful. Uh, it's uh, it from a distance. From a distance. From right. a di even up close, it's it's not bad at all. Okay. Uh, customer brought it in. A code GT. You know, um, desirable car. Yeah. We threw it up on the rack this morning, and we just want to have a look around under it, see how what sort of shape it was in, and what kind of red flagged me initially was the door gap. If you okay. If you the door gap. Watch the door gap. Oh yeah. Now, any convertible you put up on a rack is going to sag a little bit. That's just that's just a given. Right. That's more than it should be. So that really made me think I need to look for some rust. Okay. And, you know, there's something that's a bit compromised here. We kept going up, and um, it'll take a moment. But having a look around, and it actually, first glance is like, well, this is not so bad. And then it's like, hang on, it's missing torque boxes. It's missing seat braces. It's missing a bunch of stuff. It's missing all of the things that would make it a convertible. The things, all the things that are unique to it being a convertible. It's like that's really weird. All right. So, so I got I got to add this in here now, right? The customer brought him this car. The customer has never had this thing on the road. They uh, there's there's tags on inside the car that aren't on here that show that it was it was registered in May of this year. So. This person, we don't know the dealership it came from or anything like that, but this car was purchased by an unsuspecting, it's the typical thing, the unsuspecting buyer just looking for a nice, clean, classic car to cruise around in, probably came from a, you know, a, a, a flipper farm someplace, and that's how these things end up like this. So I'm going to show you some of the other fine details that we saw, but let's go back to here we go. Going underneath, it doesn't look too bad. And it's like, but hang on, there's no torque boxes up here. Right, just a big empty space. Just a big empty space, which is what the coupes, that's how the coupes and the fastbacks were built, right? Here, there's meant to be seat box braces. 
Not because there. Uh, on the inside, there's a brace that goes from one side to the other. That's not there. Um, the other little telltale was up in the wheel arch. I'm not sure whether you'll be able to see it, but there's a little area. I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see it. I we've got another light, but there's an area here that, from the factory, has a little flat spot in the top of the wheelhouse. Okay. And, you know, to allow the convertible top to drop down. This has been beaten within an inch of its life. <laughs> Like it's just been smashed down to make clearance and it's like why have they done all that? So I thought this kind of seems like it's a coupe. Uh, turns out it is, or it was. It was a coupe. I've run the VIN number and this car is actually 75% coupe and the 25% of the top is now a convertible. Someone's converted it but so, without putting any of the strengthening features in that a convertible had they've used the whole floor pan chassis out of a coupe cut the roof off tagged on the little bits of convertible and here we are so, so you remember when you were like 17 and it was summertime and you guys and you, all your buddies wanted a convertible so you all chipped in like 15 dollars and you bought an old Delta that was on its way to the scrapyard and you hacked the roof off of it and shared it amongst your friends until the thing just, the doors wouldn't open and it was all bent up like a pretzel. There it is, <laughs> there it is. So, typical dealer ripoff stuff. If you guys are not, if you know people, you know, your friends, relatives, neighbors that are, that are kind of looking for a classic car, you got to show them videos like this because this is the kind of thing, this is too common. It just, it's all over the place. And this is like out and out thievery. In addition to the car, it's just not safe. No, the car's not safe. It's not strong enough. Ford put all that stuff in there, you know, at their cost. They did that, you know, in spite of wanting to, would, they would have rather not made more money on it, but they knew it had to be in there. So they put it in. And convertibles were a bit more expensive because of it, and that's how it's supposed to be. Well, like any unibody car, the frame, the roof, is part of the structure. So when you take the roof off, there's there's just there's there's nothing hold. There's no there's no integrity. In an accident, this car would just crumble. There's nothing there, and it, even actually just using it going down the road, just normal use, the, it would flex and fatigue to the point that things would start to stress crack. The, the, they would work hard and, and crack. So like this car is just not usable. It's a paperweight. It's a, it's a three thousand pound paperweight. What did the uh, what did the customer decide to do with this? Uh, he's put. But we were doing a few bits and pieces to it. Um, we're just going to wrap that up. Um, he was going to add a, like power steering and stuff like that, and he's pulled the pin on that. Um, and he's just going to take it home and figure out what he's going to do. But yeah, he's got a reasonably hefty investment, and he's got to figure out what he's going to do. And I'm really not sure what he'll do. Um, it was one of those phone calls I had to make that I hate making, but it's like it, it really, it's no fun telling someone, man, I'm sorry, but you bought a lemon. And it, it's such a pretty car. You look at this thing. Otherwise, there's a beautiful paint, beautiful top. The interior is nice. It's got that, the extra gauges, that that console yeah. thing that they put in. It's a nice car, you know, on the surface at a glance. But when you start to look, you start to look at some of the finer details. You can see what it's like just unfinished mudding over here there's uh there's bondo cracking where is that can you see that yeah bondo cracking over there and then the reverse lights they put the reverse lights on backwards so they're, they're, they're pointing yeah, we've got the right on the left side and the left on the right side yeah so, so it's just it's, it's not cross-eyed it's not even the opposite of cross-eyed um, but we could top this we could top this. I don't just come out the Kiwis for one car. No, I come for two. Kiwi okay, and this is but this wait, is going to be an more. ongoing project. But wait, there's more. Yeah. This is going to be an ongoing project, so you guys can actually follow this whole thing along on his channel. What's the name of your channel? Kiwi Classics and Customs. Do you have any subscribers? <laughs> a couple of thousand. Okay, all right, yeah. Thousand. All no, right, so not yeah. Not in the big league with you yet, but no, I, you know, not it'll take close. time. So yeah, let's go look at this other. This. So tell the story of this thing. Okay, this is um. Nice 68 fastback Mustang. Uh, you know, like the gone in 60 seconds one that everybody loves. Right. Uh, it was a good running car, had a 351 Windsor in it. And the guy ended up getting a deal and got himself a 427 big block. Okay. Wanted I to put that in there, like everybody loves a big block. Um, 
So this is this is I mean it looks like a nice car. It's, it is a nice car. It's, it's kind got of slim. leather seats and it's lowered and it's, it's got, got six-speed transmission and trip yeah. rear suspension. Yeah, it's got like the 22s on it that you like. Yeah, know? yeah, they got the big wheels. Yeah. Um I don't think they're 22s, but they're, big, they're bigger than stock. <laughs> um, so he took it to a, a professional shop in California. Um, I don't know who it was, but um, yeah. they said um, they quoted him 1500 bucks to do an engine swap. Okay. So should have been the red flag. 1500 bucks is just too cheap to go from a small block to a big block. I suspect they thought they were just doing a swap. You know, for a you know, similar engine, just quick and few inches. But it's a very, very different engine. Uh, so they put it in. They put it in the wrong place. Uh, this has got a height front suspension in it. There's no room for the steering rack. So this is a side oiler 427. I don't. I'm not sure if it's a side oiler or not. To be honest, okay. I haven't kind of dug that deep into it. Haven't climbed underneath. Okay. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, you know, uh, I, I've actually got a, a side oiler 427 Mustang swap in my past, in my distant past. Oh, okay. And I'm still scarred from the experience. <laughs> this but, is going to need a lot of work to make it fit. The, I'm not sure whether you can see we're down in there, but at the moment the steering rack's held on with hose clamps. I see that. Uh, because the engine's in the wrong place, it's taken up the real estate where the rack's supposed to go. Yeah. Where, where the pan is. Look, where they, there's, there's a mount that they added. Yeah. They weld it in place over there. Here's the additions to the back, and anybody who's familiar with these cars knows that this is like big block, big block Mustangs. They, this, there's no room here. It's just, and then and the whole engine's too far forward. You've got no room here for a front pulley. It's hardened, hardened to the fans. Um, it just needs to come out again. That's what we're going to do. We're going to take it all out and and start over. Um, the shop that did it, they left the transmission in, they bolted the engine to the transmission and said, right, that's where it goes. Okay. No, that's not where it goes. Uh, it goes, you know, there's a right place for it. Yeah. So, clearance-wise... <laughs> yeah. Um, that piece of cardboard is holding itself up. No, there's a sixteenth of an inch from the master cylinder to the valve cover. <laughs> that's beautiful. Um, so yeah, it's we got a little bit of work to do. Let me see here. If I can feel that. I don't know what they've done with the engine mounts themselves, but you've got down here there's actually four bolts hold the engine mount bracket on here, but they're only using two of them and the other two are in fresh air. So they've just kind of thrown it together and, and they um they took the guys fifty hundred bucks for the swap and gave it back to them like this. Um, there's no steering hooked up, there's no exhaust, there's no nothing hooked up. Um, basically they charged them they extra for it. They bucks to just drop it in the car. Drop it in the hole and walk away. Right. Um, so here's something cute that I noticed right away. Here, can you pop the top of the air cleaner off? Sure. So you see, this is, this is a factory dual quad intake manifold. So I noticed right away that the carburetors on this are forwards, which makes them backwards on a Ford Big Block. So you notice these are vacuum secondary hollies. They have the metering block up front and no metering block in the back. So the carburetor is shorter distance from center to here than center to here. Well, Ford, what they did was on these is they turned the carburetors around backwards so that the secondaries are facing forwards. And they did that because when you drop the distributor in right here, it hits the float ball. So these carburetors are on correctly, but for a Ford, they're on backwards. And that's what this piece of linkage is right here that they don't have hooked up. This linkage actually takes the throttle, the throttle from this side and transfers it to the other side so it can operate the carburetors backwards. Forwards, backwards. F forwards if you're a Ford guy. <laughs> you're a Ford guy, aren't you? Oh, a little bit of a Ford guy. You yeah. love these things. Um, we do a lot of them. We do a lot of them. I've got a Mustang, so... You're in, you're in your glory, man. You're oh, yeah, in your I glory. My element, yes. Yeah, I mean... I think we've got five, five Mustangs here right now. And <laughs> as you guys have seen, it's not a big shot. We're pretty much full of Mustangs. We've got a token Chevy there. Yeah, we got to do something on this car too, but not right now. 
and people keep asking about we got to go over this over to this Camaro so when we were here last week we walked right past this beautiful green split bumper Camaro and people were like how could you just walk past that car and yeah I kind of get it I don't know how we walked past it either but here it is so what's the story with this one this one um, we've done a little bit of work to it just a little bit of tuning and stuff like that just those little niggly things he's not had it all that long he's decided to on sell it we had a little mishap with the hood the hood flew up Ah, oh, what happens? Which was a bit of a shame. Uh, there you go. But, you know, it's a good old, it's a good old survivor car. It's, it's good it's, driver it's, quality. It's really yeah. nice driver quality. It's you know, it's not perfect by any means, but it's not rotten. You know. Yeah. That's that's a big plus. If you ask me, Chevy hit hit it right out of the park with the nose of these cars. Yeah. Just beautiful. The insurance companies went nuts though. This is just, it's just like everything's just like right. There. As you can see, yeah, there's yeah. like no protection up here. Yeah, you wouldn't need uh, much of a you know nose to tail to cost a lot of money. Yeah. So this car is for sale. What motor is it? 350. Uh, automatic. Yep. All right. And this thing runs and drives and all of that. Yeah, it runs and drives. Goes goes fine. It goes nice like a 350 car. Camaro. What a nice car. So here you go, guys. Here's your info. <laughs> All right. There you go, man. We'll sell cars. It's reasonably priced too, but I'll let, you know, I'm not going to talk yeah. about that here, but I know he's got a pretty fair price. All right. So this, uh, this black Mustang. Yeah. You're going to cover this whole build on your channel. I will. Yeah. We'll do that. We'll go through the step by step of just making that engine fit. And we'll probably do a little bit of creative license on how we install it. We're probably going to move the firewall a little bit just to make a bit more room. Okay. Um, Ford had to shoehorn it in, um, but we're, we're sort of I've kind of got a free hand to get it in its best possible place, not the only place we could squeeze it. We make a nice looking couple. You know that? Well, one of us does. <laughs> can I, uh, when you get this thing together, can I screw around with the motor? Can you up it? Can I screw around with the motor? Can you screw around the motor? Uh, maybe, yeah. Get a tune-up on it? Yeah. Make it one hook? Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm going to play with a Ford. All right, guys. So that's it. The latest from Kiwi's custom... Kiwi wait, classics. Stop moving around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, here we go. <laughs> this is a good... Oh, no. <laughs> Let's go down here. Man, we need Kathy. We do need Where Kathy. Where is Kathy? When but we Kathy need? doesn't get shots like that. Well, no, she doesn't. Yeah. No, all right. So, yeah. so Kiwi's classic customs... Kiwi Classics and Customs. And Customs. That's that's a... <laughs> All right, that's oh it, guys. Lord. Comedy Central. Here we are. All right. So, All right. see you tomorrow. See you, guys.